Good morning, everyone. Welcome to week three of Art Starts Explores Folding. My name is Kay Slater, and I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in schools. This is week three, and so uh, we've been folding for a month now. And if you missed any of the previous workshops, you can find all of them online at Facebook or YouTube or on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online. And you can watch them anytime you want. In fact, we have all of our previous workshops um, from the previous seasons as well. And you can check them out whenever you have time to get together and make. So for this week, I thought what we would do, and I've put part one, because I've got two ideas that I think we could explore today. And so for part one, I wanted us to explore folding into 3D, into another dimension, so that um, we go from a flat piece of paper or a flat object that we're folding into something that has dimension. And so to explore folding into 3D, here are some of the items that, that I'm going to have uh, with me. You could have more, you could have less, um, you could be inspired by what, by what I'm making and then go off on your own. That's all okay for explorers. We're just uh, trying things out and that nothing is for keeps. So uh, whatever you come up with is gonna be great. So what I have assembled is some paper and it doesn't have to be new clean sheets of paper it could be ripped it could have marks on it already um, i always like to encourage people to go to the recycling bin because you know that that paper is on its way out to um to be recycled and so you can really do whatever you want with it and you don't have to feel any pressure at all about being perfect that's kind of what we're doing today. We're just exploring, we're seeing what happens when we use different materials. So if you've got some paper, a ruler, now this could be any kind of ruler. I have lots of different rulers at my art table. I think I even have a plastic one. Lots of noise, but yep, I've got a plastic one. And then I've got a large level, and then it's got a ruler on the side of it. So for me, I have lots of rulers. And so it's easy for me to find a ruler. But if you don't have a ruler, that's okay. Because what we're doing today is not taking precise or exact measurements, but we want to be able to mark um, and, and make a record so that, we can, um, so that we can stay consistent when we're working. And so an easy way of making um, a ruler, if you don't have one, and you don't really care about it being exactly in centimeters or exactly um, in inches, is that you can make your own. And luckily, all you need to do is fold up a piece of paper. You don't even have to do it many times. I like to do it smaller like this because it's easier to handle in my hand and then move around on the page. So about the same size as one of these um, ready-made rulers. You don't have to do it on that on the, um, the short side of the page. You can do it on the longer, where the longer folds are. In fact, by already folding it in the other direction, I have these cool fold marks already there, and I have a ruler that shows quarters. So folding, and I can show you with a dark line because it's a little harder to see on the white paper. But by folding it in that other way, I had a crease that showed me that I could easily have one mark, two marks, three marks, and there you go. I'm already starting to make my ruler. I'm going to keep folding an accordion. 
remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just for our making time. If you wanna go perfect, you, you are gonna to want to get a uh, ready-made ruler because those, those have exact measurements and they make sure that all rulers are measured exactly the same. But for us, for making, we don't need we don't need it to be perfect at all. Okay, so there we go. Lots of folding. I folded it into an accordion, like this, so that all the parts are almost exactly the same. I'm going as close as I can, and then I'm going to unfold it and again make some marks. One, two, three, four, and there you go. I've got my ruler. I could put numbers on this if I wanted. I could keep folding it down into smaller increments so that I could have more, more measurements on my ruler. I'm just going to do this once because you get the idea. And if you want to keep going, if you want to make your own ruler that has lots and lots of marks, go for it. See how many times you could fold any one section to see how many marks you could get. I said I was only going to fold one more time, but then this got really fun. I really wanted to see how much I could fold the paper. There you go. Okay, last, last time for me. And then smaller and smaller. There we go. So you could keep going and have your own ruler. So you don't need to have a ready-made. You could make your own. And this is just one way to make a ruler with the folding. Can you think of other ways? If you wanted to um, have a ruler that only measured one specific thing, so if you were always going to measure a specific kind of square or an object, you wanted to see um, how close everything in your making space was to one object, you could just make a ruler that just measured that one shape and then go around your making space and then measure to see if things were smaller or larger than the object you had found. All with a folded piece of paper and we've got ourselves a ruler. Okay, so we have some paper, we have a ruler, some scissors. And I always like to encourage um, people rip paper whenever they can because I sure do love ripping paper. These are some intense scissors, really, really sharp. And so you don't have to be using really sharp scissors. You could be using uh, whatever scissors that you have. But as I said, I love ripping paper. And if I have the opportunity to rip paper, I'm gonna take it. And so um, if you're feeling really uh, confident or brave or feeling like ripping paper is something you wanna do today, and if you don't have any scissors, don't worry, you can still make along with us. And then finally, a mark making tool. And a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark on a page. So that could be markers, that could be pencils, that could be crayons, that could be lipstick, that could be pudding. Anything that can mark up the page is a mark making tool. You might have more challenges if you're gonna make some marks with pudding, but if you have permission and a safe, clean space to practice drawing and mark making with pudding, and I say, go for it. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna move some of these stickies out of the way so we've got a bit more room. And there we go. There's a bit more room. Move my mini host over to the side a little bit so that we can get started. Okay, so when I'm talking about folding into 3D, I'm talking about taking this flat piece of paper, so when you look at it from above, you can check it out and see how flat it is. And that might be a fun way to start. Whatever piece of paper you have, and remember, it could be a marked piece of paper. It doesn't have to be uh, perfect. It doesn't have to be clean. Um, it could even be crumpled. It doesn't have to be nice and new and clean. If it is crumpled, you can just rub it out, see how fast. Rub out all the creases, there you go. And then look at it again. Can you look at your piece of paper 
so that when you're looking at it straight on with your eyes, that it almost seems like it disappears. Now we can't make it totally disappear. See how close you can get. Really look at that piece of paper and then see what you have to do or what angle you have to look at the paper to see how to get your paper to almost disappear. It's pretty hard, right? The reason is, is because even though we call this piece of paper flat um, and that we say that it's only got two dimensions and two dimensions meaning the height or the um, length and the width of it, when we look at it really skinny like this, we go, well, it doesn't really have any depth or thickness to it. And that's that other dimension. But if it didn't have any depth or thickness to it, we wouldn't actually be able to see it. It would be gone. It would only be um, it, like it would completely disappear when we looked at it like this. And the fact that no matter how tiny and small we can get it when we look at it in this direction means that this paper, even though it's really nice and flat, is actually 3D. It has a third dimension. So this might be 10 centimeters or this might be 30 centimeters, but this, the depth the thickness of it might only be 0 0.01 centimeters or one millimeter of thickness. But it's still got something we can measure. It's still got something, even if it's really, really, really small. And that makes it 3D. So, that means that if we've already got a 3D shape, and when I say we're folding into 3D, then technically, as soon as we add a fold to our page, we've successfully folded into 3D. And if you picked up your folded piece of paper, you could do it again, where you're gonna look at it straight on and see how um, how small or how to look, what angle to look at your piece of paper to get it to completely disappear. And chances are that now that we folded it in half, it's probably even harder to make it disappear when we look at it. Try it out. Can you look at the folded piece of paper straight on where you're looking at the thinnest, the, the, the thinnest side? Can you make it disappear now that it's folded? You can keep going, keep folding your page however you want. Really look at your page as you fold it and check out how that thickness changes every time you fold the page. What do you notice? What's different every time? I'm going to keep going. For me, as I'm folding the page, I like this over here. I, I like where um, the, the edges of the paper have a bit more um, variety to them. So where the folded page is, this one looks like a V. This one looks like a flower petal or a W with too many stems to it. It's, it's interesting, but if I'm thinking about a thin line, I think this line at the crease is the most interesting for me because I've really been able to watch that line get just a little bit thicker every single time. And if we're talking about dimension, I really, I'm, I'm really enjoying watching that line get progressively incrementally, a little bit by little bit, getting thicker and thicker. It makes me think about drawing a picture and how to get um, more thickness to a line when I'm drawing. And so I can use different techniques when I'm using a marker. I can look at, oh, that one's a really thick one. Oh, whatever. Whatever, I'll just be challenged to see what kind of marks I can get from this strange pen tip. 
And so I want to get a thin line. Maybe I'll go slow and I'll just use a corner and edge. I want to use a thicker line. I find a section of my marker and I use a thicker line. And then if I want to go thicker, maybe I'll use that edge. But if I only had, um, if I had a round tip marker, I think I actually do have one. I mean, if you only had a pencil, you could check it out. How do you go from a thin line to a thick line? You can color it in. You could keep drawing the same line over and over again. You could draw in different colors. You could draw um, not just a straight line, but add different shapes, right? And so there's different ways for you to be able to create um, different thicknesses when you, when you draw a line. And I'm kind of reminded of that as I'm folding my piece of paper that to get my thicker line, I wanted to have um, something that was a bit more noticeable, I would have to keep folding it. How many times have you been able to fold your piece of paper? That could be a fun challenge. What I'm noticing now is that yes, this line over here that we've been observing is really nice and thick. You can't ignore it now. You really, you really know that this paper has a third dimension when it's folded over like this. But it's not a sharp, it's not a sharp edge anymore. I don't have a sharp crease from where I'm folding. It's kind of this rounded edge. And that's because I can't actually press the paper thin enough with my fingers to make it to make it fold over. There's so much dimension, there's so much material that I'm trying to fold through that I can't actually crease it. That's really cool. I really like I really like that. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do it one more time. I, I don't know, my, my fingers are really cramping. So that material line there, all of a sudden, wasn't just thick, it was strong. I had no problem folding all the other layers when we were looking at this kind of thin and uh, kind of weak line. It didn't really create any resistance. It was quite easy for me to take a thin line and bend it and fold it in half. But then as soon as that fold got thicker, had more presence, it became really difficult to fold. I'm really gonna do it, I'm gonna do one more. Oh yeah, all right, it's not a pretty line. <laughs> it's kind of a squished up piece of paper now, but there we go. You really can't ignore that this piece of paper has got dimension, has got thickness. And so let's, I'm going to unfold it once just because it got kind of messy there. Just like before, when we had our flatter piece of paper, and it was easy to pretend like this only had two dimensions, the length or the height and the width of the piece of paper and very little depth, just a, just a skinny, tiny little depth. But now we've got our length, we've got our width, and then there's no denying that that paper has thickness or depth to it. And if we had, if we had a ruler, whether it's your made ruler or not, go along and you could check it out. You could challenge yourself to see um, how many folds you can get. How thick can you make the line? If you're making with another person, um, if you're making with um, siblings or classmates, or friends, a grown up, you could each of you see, you could all start with a similar size paper, or you could all come with different papers and you could each try and fold it and see how many times you could fold it and then pass that piece of paper around and so that you could Compare it and see what's different. You could find the paper that's easiest to fold. You could find the paper that's hardest to fold. You could find 
who has the most strength or dexterity in their fingers. And you may find when you're making with other people that some people have no problem folding a piece of paper and other people might be really challenged. And that's where you can support each other and help. Um, and if somebody can only fold a piece of paper a couple of times, you can swap and then they can take a turn and observe the line and uh, take notes on all the things that they were able to um, notice about the line while you keep folding and you can do it together. So that was just folding one piece of paper into 3D. We didn't make any marks. We didn't really measure it. It was really quite easy. And there were so many things that we could check out and start observing about this piece of paper. But when you unfold this piece of paper, what do you notice? It's a little hard for you to see because the light kind of creates a reflection. But what I see is I can see all the crease marks of where we folded the page. And what came out of this were some squares or some rectangles. So remember when we were folding, it became these smaller rectangles. Even if we folded it one more time like this, right? It's a rectangle. It went from this larger rectangle into this smaller rectangle. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip the paper, but if you have scissors, what you could do is you could take your scissors and you could cut every fold line that you can find from when you did your experiment. For me, I think I'm going to pick these shapes. So remember, you can use scissors if you want. If you've got a little bit of a fingernail, you can run your fingernails along those creases. then I'm going to rip the page. Right, and so that was one of my folds. So now I've got two rectangles. I didn't have to measure anything, although I did kind of measure by folding the page into halves and quarters and eighths. I was dividing up the page just by folding. And then I was able to create these cool ready-mades, these already made shapes, without really having to do anything out extra. Starting to have a whole bunch of shapes ready to go. Okay. Okay. So from one piece of paper, we were able to get eight different ready-mades. I could have kept going. I could have gone into smaller shapes, but I want to, I want to play um, at a big enough size so that you can see my shapes clearly. And with white paper, that can be a little bit difficult. Also, you don't have to be using white paper. It's not just that you can use paper that has different marks on it. You could use different kinds of material. You, you, you could use paper that is different colors. You could grab your mark making tool and you could color the page. Here, I'm just gonna use this so that I don't go over and uh, make a mark in my marking space because I wanna respect my making space. I can use as many pieces of paper. I don't even have to use this piece of paper. I could use one of my other uh, other shapes that I found to do this because nothing is for keeps. We don't have to be super precious about this. We're going to put this stuff back in the recycling bin when we're all done. We're done exploring. So it doesn't matter if we use other shape or one of our other pieces to uh, to protect our surfaces. 
and I'm not not making perfect lines here. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to use this page now to mark up this one. So if you have lots of paper in a recycling bin, um, then uh, you can use some paper as your protection paper. You can use your paper to make cool patterns as you're going along. See how I, I turned the page as I was doing my mark this time? Now I have this cool X shape here. I'm going to keep going. This is fun. I'm really liking this. Okay, this one. Now I'm going to think about how I'm positioning. So all of a sudden, by using these shapes to be the protection, I was able to uh, learn something new find out some, um, uh, a different way of doing these different marks that I wasn't even thinking about beforehand. And now I can decorate the pages of my shapes as I go along. Making my marks. And then I can throw on a small one over there. I really like it. And now each one of my shapes is a little bit different. It's kind of unique because I'm not I'm not trying to be perfect or, or exactly precise. Mm, I think I want some marks this way this time. Yeah, okay. I like that it's got kind of a random look to it. I wasn't really planning them out. So each one is a little bit different. Okay. This one I'm doing all on one side. There we go. Okay, and I'm not going to draw around the outside edge of this one, and I leave that one blank. So the each one's a little bit different. I think I'm going to add a few more lines over here so that this one looks really different from this one. There we go. Okay, so just by folding, just by using my folded shapes as my background, I already have these really cool ready-mades to work with. And you could do the same thing before as you were doing with the plain piece of paper. Now it's quite easy to see the um, length and the width of each of these shapes. Um, they're each so different. Um, there's quite a bit of contrast between the background and the foreground or the, the my background space and my shapes. Oh, oh, neat. You could also flip them over. Yeah. Oh, I really like how, how kind of distressed the markers have made them look. Neat. The, the markers kind of bled through on my pieces of paper, especially around the edges where I ripped them. If you had cut your paper, you, uh, you would probably have something different um, than what I had. Because when I was ripping the page, I was distressing the lines. So I wasn't exactly perfectly cutting all the fibers of the paper, which means that some of the paper was a little bit weaker or had um, some of the fibers ripped um, on top of each other. And so some of the edges are thinner than others, which cause the marker to bleed through more on some shapes rather than others. So cool. I might not have been expecting that when I started out, but now I know that technique. So if I ever wanted um, to have that kind of distressed look to a piece of paper, I know that I could rip my paper, draw on the other side, and then use this side as my good piece uh, for whatever project I was going to do. It's great when we're exploring and we learn new techniques that we can use for projects when we are doing things for keeps. Okay, sorry, I got excited about these, this paper when I flipped it over, but what I was going to say was, now what you can do is, again, you could do some deep looking, and you can look, now that you've got some marks on the page, is it easier or harder to make the page disappear when you try and look at it on, um, on the depth or width, sorry, depth or thickness side uh, when you've got the marks on it? For me, because I have a darker background, the black of the marker disappears more into this space 
And when I had the white paper, it was it was more difficult because there's more contrast uh, between or more color difference between the white and the green cutting board. But it still has it. I can't make it disappear completely, even though it's a smaller piece of paper. I, I also think that because it's a smaller piece of paper, I'm finding it easier to make it disappear. There's not as much paper on the other side, so it doesn't fold on, on itself. And so it looks like a thinner piece of paper. I also noticed because I had folded these pages before, some of my paper is kind of curling up. And so while it doesn't make the paper itself thick, thicker, it ends up taking up more space. So from the flat surface up into this 3D space, into the airspace here, it takes up more space just because it doesn't sit as flat. So even using flat pieces of paper, I'm taking up more dimension. What if I was to fold these all in half? Again. And for me, I've already got the crease halfway through because I folded these uh, one smaller than how I, I ripped up the page. But if you didn't, you could take the, your various rectangles that you ripped up and now do the, do the work of folding it in half. And you don't have to fold it in half uh, lengthwise, the long way. You could do it along the width, the shorter, the shorter edge. There we go. I'll do three of them like that. What do you notice now? Take a walk around your shapes. What do you notice when you're looking at it from the front? or from the side, or from the back, or even from the other side. Go all the way around, 360, around all of your shapes. What do you notice? If you drew on each one of your shapes, and so that your drawings are a little bit different, what do you notice? Maybe it looks um, it looks like one thing when you look at it straight on, but when you look at it on the side, your mark making can look completely different. What if you start combining these shapes? Take another walk. Turn them around. Move them in relation to each other. What do you notice? I think I'm gonna fold this one and you can change it up as you want. If you notice something and then you wanna try something else or you, uh, you start noticing something cool and you wanna repeat it, then keep going. You don't have to be doing exactly what I'm doing because we're all, we're just exploring what we're, what we're, uh, what we're learning here. Keep going. How else could you combine the, the different shapes? Change it up. So with one piece of paper folded into half, then a quarter, then an eighth, and some mark making tools, I came up with these really interesting shapes. I could then take these shapes and uh, keep drawing around the outside so it would have these really cool pictures on them. I could shine some light on them to see the different shadows that these shapes cast. I could take a doll or a toy or create a small mini host like this and move through the environment. 
what would you see if you were smaller walking through these shapes? Can you pretend like you were smaller and these shapes were bigger? What would it look like? Keep changing the shapes and look at it with your, your eyes and then pretend uh, what it would look like to look like with smaller eyes. You don't have to make a character. You could take a pen and pretend that this is you and you've now become the height of this pen or this marker or your pencil or your finger. What would the world look like? What would the paper look like if you were to look at these different shapes? If you were this tall, or if you were this tall, or if you were this tall. For me, this box shape right here definitely looks more like a building than it did when it was just a folded or even an unfolded piece of paper. We didn't need any glue. We didn't need any scissors. And it's okay if you use scissors, but if you'd rip the paper, it was just a piece of paper and some marks that made these really cool shapes. And you could keep going. Keep combining with shapes. What can you, what can you notice? What do you discover? If I was to keep using these shapes, I bet you anything that I could make a whole set that looked kind of like a house or like a garden. And then I could use all of these shapes to help me plan a space. I could make a, um, a playhouse. I could make a small version of my playground at my school. I could make a smaller version of my room. And then I could use these shapes. Here, I'm gonna keep going here. I'll use my scrap piece of paper here. It doesn't need to be perfect. There we go, I got four squares here. I could say that this is, what is this? Maybe this is the door to my, to this room that I'm designing. Maybe this is your classroom. Okay, so there's the door into the classroom. And then you could fold these shapes into thirds and make a table. That's maybe your teacher's desk. And then that was really big. So I'm gonna you know, fold this in half. You don't have to make a real space either. You could just make a pretend room or garden or box. What could you put in it by just folding some different pieces of paper? Let me go even smaller. Go. And you see what I mean by not needing any kind of scissors? It doesn't have to be perfect or exact. While we're just having fun, while we're just making a prototype, these don't have to be perfect shapes but it's a little bit easier than just drawing it on a piece of paper, especially if we wanted to be able to move things around. So if this was my classroom and I wanted to figure out um, how many desks I could fit in the space, then, um, then I could do this activity. What did I do? I went long like this. Um, I could do this activity where I measured, so I took my ruler, or I took my ruler 
Or I took my ruler. <laughs> you might have a, a wooden, a wooden um, yard stick or meter stick as well, especially if you're doing it in the classroom. But you could go around and you could measure different things. So like you could measure the desk and then you could measure a chair and then you could do the math to figure out how many times smaller that that desk is to uh, the teacher's desk. And then you could find out the ratio of um, uh, the, the, the relative size. And then you can rip up your paper so that it was um, the same um, size ratio. And then you can have a, um, a more exact representation of, uh, of your classroom. And then you can really know how many desks um, and chairs and objects you can fit into your classroom. And I could keep going. And I, and I you know what, I just might, because this is really fun. I think I'm only going to be able to fit uh, six of these desks just based on the paper that I have. Well, these ones are really big. <laughs> Uh, well, that's okay. You know what? Maybe there's only six desks. Oh, you know what? I'm going to change this. This is now, this is now a living room or maybe a dining room. And so this is a table, a serving table over here. And because I didn't have any goals, I was just, I'm just playing. I can totally change the scene. And so I'm going to pretend that those are chairs now. And then there's a table that everybody can sit around and figure out what orientation to put the oops, chairs around. There we go. And then, and then what I could do is I could make little name tags. And this is a seat for Bess. Bess is gonna sit there. And this is a seat for a pat. There. And then rip up a bit more paper because I do love to rip paper. And this is a seat for Pavan. And this is a seat for Hannah. There you go. You've got your dinner party. <laughs> there are lots of ways that you can explore paper into 3D. You'll see uh, patterns online that talk about building shapes into cubes. And so you can find um, cutout shapes online that will allow you to actually fold or tape different shapes together and make a cube. But I didn't want to use any tape today. I wanted to see what we could do with just a piece of paper and just a mark making tool. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't take these shapes when you're done with them. If you're, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> you move all that paper to the side. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't tape these together if you had some tape. to see what happens. I do happen to have some tape here. And so even though I, I didn't put that on our um, list of things to do, you can do this if you have some tape or you can just watch what I'm doing right now. And so you could fold it like this and just tape it. You could also just take each one of the sides and you could tape them together. Again, this isn't for keeps, so I don't have some nice tape, it's not clear tape. There we go. And then same as before, you could fold your shapes up. Put one more piece of tape over there.
And now your pieces of uh, folded and ripped paper have made a shape that you can move around without worrying that it's going to, uh, it's going to be blown away. Um, and there you go. You could take another piece of paper and then go, okay, it's about that size. Or you know what? I'm going to take my, I could take my ruler and go, this is about, oh, it's from this line to this line. Great. So that's my ruler. It tells me that I want that size of shape. Great. See, I've got marks on this paper and that's okay because we're just playing, just exploring. And then there we go. Same as before, if I wanted to, I could use some tape. I don't like the tape as much as just being able to fold it because I like to be able to move things around as I'm making. But if this makes you feel better, then you should totally tape it down, especially if you've got some tape. So we're just trying to explore and just because I don't like it doesn't mean that you're not going to like it. There we go. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It didn't have to fit exactly. But now we've got that flat paper has become a three dimensional shape because it definitely has depth. And then it has length and it has width. So there's lots of different ways that you can be exploring the paper and folding into 3D to see what happens. I'm going to quickly clean up my space a little bit so that I can get ready for part two. If you're not sticking around for part two, I encourage you, like always for all explorers, to take a second or take a couple of seconds, take a few minutes if it takes, it, uh, takes that long, to clean up your space and make sure you put all of your paper uh, back into the recycling bin, you put away your mark making tools, uh, you put away your rulers um, so that we are respecting our space and we're all ready to go for the next time we want to make together. Okay, let's get started with part two from week three of Art Starts Explores Folding. For this activity, I thought what we could do is we could make up our own game with folded paper. If you were here for part one, you might have already some ready-mades, some folded paper that we had, um, that we used for part one. If you don't, and you're just coming in right now and trying out part two, that's okay. All you need is some scrap paper that you are going to uh, be able to fold. And so that can have paper with marks. I encourage you to take paper out of the recycling bin. And if you have paper from other projects, then absolutely you can reuse them. I'm going to use these two page or these two pieces from the first one. In fact, those are two similar. I think I'm going to go with this one and this one. So just using some folded pieces of paper, what kind of games could we play? The first one that I was thinking of was using breath or air. Some people are going to be able to use their breath and are going to have powerful lungs. And some people aren't, and that's okay. If you want to use your breath for this activity, what you could do is you could put these two pieces of paper together and you could pretend like they're racers or two friends going for a run or your neighbor's dog and your dog, whoever you want to uh, personify by these pieces of paper to pretend with, you can do that. And then what you could do is you could use your breath 
or especially if you're making with somebody else and they're part of your bubble and it's safe to be doing this. Or what you could do is you could take one piece of paper on one table, one piece of paper on another table. You could get your ruler and you could mark out the start distance and the end distance on each, each piece or each table because we want to be safe. This was recorded in March 2021. We're still practicing safe distancing. So if we're using our breath, we definitely want to distance ourselves. So you can put your two pieces of paper at the starting line and then go, ready, set, go. <laughs> or <laughs> and you could race the two pieces of paper. I only have one mouth, <laughs> so I can only do it one at a time. But if you had um, a friend or another grown up that you're making with, you could race your folded pieces of paper. Again, though, using your breath is something that you want to do um, slowly and only for a little bit at a time. When you're done doing the race, take a second and take a deep breath before starting again because you don't want to make yourself dizzy. So if you feel dizzy at all while you're making, that's your body's telling you to stop, and you should. If you don't want to use your breath, you don't feel comfortable using your breath, or you don't feel safe using your breath, you could always take another piece of paper and see how much air <laughs> it'll take Ah, to raise your papers and then you don't even need to do it with someone else you do it by yourself ah come on cross the street stop through the, the end line <laughs> there you go so just with pieces of paper you could raise them i was just using flat pieces of paper but it was really hard to control well we're playing with folding this week so why don't we see what we, how we could fold the paper to make it easier to control our game piece? Oh, so folding it by four made it a little bit easier to control, but still not enough. What if, what if I was to make a fan out of this? I didn't do a great job of that. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm going to make an accordion where I'm just going to fold it over and over and over again. It doesn't have to be exact. This is just a tool for playing. I'm not making anything for keeps. Okay, so now I've got my fan. Does that make it any better? <laughs> there we go. Oh, come on. Cross the finish line. Ta-da. And so you could make a fan with each hand. Again, you could play with another friend. And then you don't have to worry, or a, a grown-up or a classmate, you don't have to worry about um, breath. You can still wear your mask while you are playing this together. You could play this outside or play it inside. Does the wind help? Really easy, fast game using just a piece of paper. <laughs> go, 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 go! I had stuck on my tape. You can do it. Okay. There we go. Go, 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 go. There. All right. So, just using two pieces of paper, we created a game. What other games could you create with folding paper? When you're exploring um, any activity and you make a set of ready-mades, it can be really fun before you recycle all your objects, before you put them away, to reimagine them as other things. Just because you started out wanting to draw or wanting to fold doesn't mean that you can't end your exploration with a game or a play or a story that you tell with the different objects that you make. 
There are no rules when we're exploring, except to be as safe and respectful as we possibly can and respect everyone um, around us and the land we're making on. And that really gives you lots of opportunity to, to play and imagine and figure out what you can do with what you're making. Thanks so much for exploring with me today. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. This is the last workshop on folding this month, but we will be back again next month and I can give you a sneak peek. We're gonna be exploring comics, but be sure to join us next week for our performance um, for our Art Starts on Saturday um, event that happens every, uh, every Saturday at the end of the month at 11 a.m. There's always something to do and try at Art Starts Explorers. We release a new episode every Saturday at 11 a.m. You can check these out at any time whenever you're available. Just like every week when I explore, I'm gonna take a, a, a few minutes to clean up my space because we want to respect our space by uh, being uh, done with making. I encourage you to do the same thing and I hope to see you again for a future episode of Explorers.